Hi guys, it's Paul from InternationalScaleModel.com Welcome to part 4 of our techniques guide uh, In part 3 you saw me uh, gluing the fuselage halves together sanding, filling, uh, etc. What I've done in the meantime, off camera, I've noticed a few little spots that needed touching up so they've been done uh, that's currently drying so that'll be done off camera exactly the same way I've showed you in the in part 3 uh, once this is all dry, we've got the wings on, etc. We'll come back for part five, which will cover the rescribing and what have you. So that's to one side. Um, what we've got here is the undercarriage wing sections and obviously the top wing sections as well. I cut these off the sprues. I cut the sprue uh, edges off, uh, not fully, I'm not fully sanding them as well yet, uh, only on parts where. They're going to be sitting in as such, but on the edge of the leading edges, I've left that proud. That'll be sanded off because if you cut it with your uh, modelling cutters, it's going to leave a, an odd edge, so that'll be sanded off. Um, so basically, this is to show gluing wing halves together and then gluing them to the actual fuselage itself. There'll be a little bit of filling required in probably three, four places. I'll run through that. The filling we'll do today will be not something that's left, you have to sand it, it'll be put on, wiped off straight away, leaving a perfect um, filled wing root and where it joins the fuselage as well. So, to glue, time are extra thin as always for me. So, like I say, these have been cut off, they've been tied up a little bit but not fully. Uh, you'll notice on the Airfix kit, I'll zoom in a little bit, there's locating holes and lugs, so you literally get the correct side, pop them in, and as everything else on this kit, all a brilliant fit, absolutely superb. It's identical for the other side. So the way I glue these, if it's a section like the back, where there's more parts to be glued, you're not going to see this, and because it forms a V, you can literally glue that like normal. What you need to be majorly careful of is you don't get any finger prints from glue runs because it's very easy to add too much it trickle down into your finger, you don't realise it's there, you pull it off and you leave a big gooey mess behind uh, which is never good so you're not trying to lash it in the glue, you're just putting it in the capillary action of this thin glue will do most of the work if you use another type of glue, a thicker type, then use your normal technique but I don't use those types just the extra thins for me. So there we go. Obviously, pay attention to everywhere that's glued. Do not be putting your finger anywhere it shouldn't. What I should have prepared off camera was my pegs, which are in my drawer, which needs a good sort out. So, normal household pegs. Again, make sure you're not applying it where there's any glue. Proud. Perfect, spin it round, try and keep us in the shot. So that's a V section that you're not going to see. Now we've got a flat section here. So again, exactly the same technique you would for the other glue in. Follow the line. Let the extra thin glue do its work. A capillary action will carry it in, little press. Obviously be aware of any glue is as always. Just keep popping back, making sure you're glued, still what you want to. Which we are. Now on the inner section where you can see actually in to the wings themselves, I always put a little bit on each edge. Like so. Again, a little push, make sure they're in. You may find, like you can see there, the pegs are getting in the way. What I tend to do is turn them a little bit. So we go, that's better. Now, I'm going to whip that off for a minute. What we've got now is the front section. Now, you can go this normally as we've done the others. You can run that along there, the brush, but you're going to find you get runs, etc. The easiest way, and I pick this up off other modelers, is upside down. Obviously, gravity will only flow downwards with the glue. Not a massive amount of glue on the brush and we're literally, if I can just see, you can see 
run the brush underneath and hopefully allow the capillary action to carry up into the wing. All the way along, flip it round, give it a little press, not hard, because if you can see where it's, I've just pressed it, it's pushed out what I call molten plastic, which is a plastic that's melted. And is now protruding, not a problem because you can sand that off once you're done. Also with doing that you'll find you have less to fill but ideally you don't be pressing really hard and destroying all the shapes and what have you at the surface. So just make sure you've got glue in everywhere you need it, which I have. And then the clothes peg again. Obviously make sure you're not clamping it too tight. So I'm just going to pop that. Where are we going to put it? Right there, there's a little gap. Take a little look actually. You'll find some needed, some don't. There's a little section just there that keeps springing. So it keeps opening up a little gap. So I'm going to pop a peg on there. We'll find some, there we go. That'll do, perfect. So once you've done one side, have a good look round. Make sure you've got everywhere that needs gluing. And move on to the next one. Exactly the same uh, technique on the other side. On the backs, you can use it like normal, like a brush. On the edges, again, just ever so thin. Because obviously it's a flat edge on a flat edge, just like gluing normal parts. But on these recessed, curved sections of the front of the wing, upside down, away you go. So I'm going to glue the other side on. We'll let it dry. And then we'll come back, sand it off, and get to work some filling. Okay, so it's probably 20 minutes later now. Glue's all dried. We've got one little gap, if I can find it, which is just there. So a little bit of filler. Just there it is. A little bit of filler. We'll soon get that sorted. So to fill it, exactly the same as we did the fuselage, we're going to sand it smooth. With all the glue, get rid of all the glue marks and what have you. Then we'll put in a little bit of um, perfect plastic putting. Once that's dry, a little bit of Mr. Surfacer, job done. So, as normal, sand and stick, your favourite type. I know a lot of you guys use nail files from Powerline, but I think the actual purpose built ones are much better. Um, we're all essentially the same at the end of the day, but the better sizes, better grits and what have you. Various different manufacturers. Sponge is ideal because you go on a radius surface. The curved front edge of the wings. You don't want to be applying any flat sand to that because you'll lose the roundness and what have you. So all we're doing is taking off any excess plastic Anything that's been pushed out from the glue. Just have a good look as you're doing it. Obviously, parts like this, there's a leading edge to go on this. Same on the other side. No pressure, We're just letting the sander do its work. So you're happy that what you've got is a service you'll be left with. Obviously we're going to fill it as well, but a little bit to get where you want. Right now. There we go, and it's a bit of filler like I said, a little bit there. Now, as I said before, I left this edge on where the sprue was. So now I'm going to use a sponge 
and just gently profile the edge. No pressure, just let the sander do its work. Until you're happy. Just how you want it. I'll do. Same on the other side. Now underneath, where that flat edge was, we're just going to give it a light going over with the sander. This doesn't need any filling, so what we can do then, once we've done all the filling and sanding, we'll come back with a polisher, polish it up, remove all the glue marks. Job done on that one. And there we go. So, ready for some filler there now. So, I'm going to fill it exactly the same as we did on the fuselage. Perfect plastic putty. I'll find my spreader, which is there. So, a little bit on. We're just going to pop it in any gaps we can see. Obviously you don't want gallons of the stuff sticking out, so go over it and then take off as much excess as you can without losing the further where you actually require it. So as you can see, a little bit of excess there, we don't want that all over there. So we just use the actual putty spreader to remove it. So that's everything that needs filling. Yep, yeah, so that's going to be left to dry. Probably another 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Come back, send that off. Uh, I'll then apply the Mr. Hobby Mr. Servicer off camera because you've seen it done on the fuselage. I'm not going to waste time in this video showing that again. Uh, once we're all sanded, I'll come back and I've already dry fitted the wing sections onto the fuselage. And it's perfect fit, tiny little gap on side. And I'll show gluing that in place and filling the wing roots. Right, okay, a few hours later now. All the fuselage perfectly filled. Polished, everything ready for rescribing, so we'll cover that in part five. So I can go to one side for now. Wings, all the front leading edges have been sanded, polished as to uh, leading edges of the wings. We've got all the other parts of the wing sections to add. Um, there's about four or five different components each side to add, but they'll be added once it's all glued, filled, and attached to the actual fuselage itself. So we need <clears throat> extra thin glue again. We'll need the perfect plastic putty, we move those out of the way, and we'll need our spreader, if I can find where to put it, easier said than done, it's knocking about somewhere, there it is, right, so like I said before, kit literally falls together, very well made kit, well designed, almost lift itself together so as you can see I'll zoom in a little bit you've literally got a little gap there so I'm sticking my fingernails all the sand in today one little gap there in the root this side perfect underneath we've got quite a large gap there to fill it's recessed a little bit which has been sanded but we'll fill that in a little bit 
Uh, obviously we've got the under cowling to go on at the front, which will be done most probably off camera to be honest because it doesn't really cover what we're doing today. Uh, a little bit of fill there. I can get it in shot, a little bit of fill just there as well. So what we're going to use, I'll zoom out again, is we're going to use a plastic putty. Once we glued it all, we'll then uh, apply the putty into the seam gaps, the wing roots and what have you. And then we're going to use a moistened cotton bud, run it along the actual gap itself and remove it all before it dries. We don't want to be sanding because it's an absolute nightmare of a place to sand. So we're going to remove it all. Uh, before it actually set. Quick way of doing it, um, but before that we've got to glue it in position and obviously let that dry. But it's a quick easy way of doing it and that's what we're going to do. So extra thin, again you don't want a lot. Um, all you're doing is gluing that little wing root there as we can see. Um, so there's no need for a massive amount of glue. Same as always, that the capillary action carry its way through, make sure you're in shot up there. Obviously where there's a bigger gap, you need to pop in a little bit more glue. But we don't want a massive amount in there. Excuse my dog's barking. Same on the other side. Just follow the same line, actual wing root itself. And there we go. Now what can happen, that little gap we did have you give the wind a little, wing a little bit of manipulation as you can see it's actually disappeared because it's a hot glue and it's melting the plastic it can actually fill its own little gap so there may not even be need for any filler there but we'll let it dry and we'll see what happens so again, the major gaps there at the back where this section here joins the actual fuselage. Oh, drop it. Obviously if you do drop something, make sure you A, haven't got glue on your fingers when you pick it back up, and B, nothing's moved. Quite hard to do this and keep you guys in shot as always. Here we go, that's better. So this is the main reason why I prefer the extra thin glue, because it does half the work for you. By being so thin the capillary action literally takes it where you want it rather than you trying to struggle to either put it in beforehand and what have you so like I say if you can see that there we had a gap there that's now gone that wing root is now perfectly joined on both sides with no gap whatsoever so the only gaps we've got are here which will be hidden once the remaining parts are put on, there and at the front, if we can get it in shot, just there and there, and again, a little bit of filler in there, uh, wipe it away, that's it, no problem at all, done. So, I'm going to leave this to dry, probably 15, 20 minutes, we'll come back, we'll put some filler in, and that's us done for today. The other thing you may notice as well, once you've sanded your fuselage, you may have lost a little bit of detail from painted parts. So I'll come back in, I think it was RMO2, I remember right. We'll touch that up and also, sadly, on my instruments, I've lost a bit of the black and the dry brushing, but I've got a paintbrush in there. Touch all that up, 
um, ready for the canopy then. So, like I said, leave this to dry, I'll pop back and we'll get it sorted. Right, okay, so the glue's all now dried, and it's been approximately about ooh, an hour. Uh, excuse the aircraft going overhead. So, if the light will catch it, you'll see the glue marks just along there. So, we're going to quickly remove those, and to do that, we'll use a polishing stick. Um, so, you've got mildly abrasive one side, polisher the other, and all you want to do is literally get in between the fuselage and the wing roots are in the camera down a bit, the light rather. And all we're doing is we're flattening off the glue marks which are now done and then we're going to polish it with the other side. You can hear the squeak. one side done. So near enough all the glue marks gone, it's just a little bit there. Not actually running right down the side. Done. Quickly do the side then we'll go on with some filling. Again, the rough side done onto the polisher. Like I said originally, we did have one gap. Which is now disappeared. Totally. With a gap just there. Gone, the glue got rid of that, so that's great. That's one last thing to fill. I was hoping to show you how to fill the ring wing roots. But there's no need and but the method used is exactly the way we're going to do it under here so your preferred choice of putty which for me is deluxe materials perfect plastic putty applicator of some sort i use mr hobby's glue and putty applicators small blob On the end of the applicator, you can see the gap we need to fill. We're going to put the filler in, ensure it's pushed all the way in, even ever so slightly proud. What we're going to do is grab a little bit of tissue. So you can hear that rustling outside as well. My ferret decided to wake up. He's having a play or a muck about by the sound of it. So, cotton bud. Put to one side. What we'll do first is we'll get most of this filler off where it's not needed. Because what we're going to do now is we're just going to wipe off. around where the filler is, hopefully leaving the filler in the gap. So as you can see I've got the most off, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get the moistened cotton bud, we're going to turn it quite often to give us a clean cotton bud, you're going to need a few of these, so grab a few at a time. To moisten them, I literally put them in, the ma in my mouth. All I'm trying to do is get rid of all the excess before I finally go into where we filled. So there we go. So I'm going to get a clean one now. You can see the filler in the hole, in the gap. I'm 
moistened over anywhere else you can see any and there's the gap filled. Now there is a slight step which is where I've sanded this, it's inevitable, it can't be helped because there is a seam there, we have to fill it several times so what I'll do, once this, this is dried I'll give it a go over again with the sanding sponge hopefully I'll get the profile further down, hopefully it'll take it just to the right level of the filler if not I'll do the exact same technique again pop it in, wipe it off, but as you can see that gap is filled I just need to take that step off and we're done so there we go get a little step of the front doesn't need any filler, I thought it would originally, it just needs sanding so for me the likes of the FlexiFile tool set's very handy because you can literally get right in there with it being flexible it shouldn't uh, flatten off the edges of the wings just get it nice and flush just like so same on the other side we do it this way, you can see if there's any fill I need, you can use the exact same technique we used on the rear part. Pop it in, moisten uh, cotton bud to remove any fill I needed. They don't think they need any filler at all, which is great. So there we go, there's the wings attached. That main gap's filled. When we come back next time um, to rescribe, I'll show that. Hopefully, I've not that step back. Maybe need a little bit more filler in it to get it flush. Um, this front section, there's a piece of undercount to go under here. Uh, from memory, it doesn't need any filler, but if it does, again, same technique. Pop it in with a putty applicator. Moisten cotton board, wipe it straight off. There's no need to sand, you're not removing any, de removing any detail from underneath and what have you. So I'll do that off camera, and next time we come back, I'll start the video by showing these and these. But as you can see, those wing roots are absolutely perfect. Not all the kits are going to be like this, some are going to have massive gaps, even like some of the Tamiya kits still have a gap there, it might only be you know, half a mil or whatever. But the exact same technique, get your filler in and it's easier on the wing route because you've got a guide down the edge. Wipe it off, leave it, job done. That's easy. So there we go, it's part four. Um, I'll be back for part five, we'll cover rescribing. As I said, I'll show those parts redone. Um, still plenty more parts coming up on this. Let me go about. I've added a part, which is this one. It was originally going to be part three, but I didn't have time to fit it in. So this has become part four on its own. So it'll be 11 parts so far, covering everything all the way through um, to the completed model. So hope you like what you've seen today. Hope it helps. Any comments, as always, pop them in the YouTube comments or pop them on the forum. Any recommendations or things you want to see. Please comment, let us know, uh, either myself or Lee. And um, that's it. So, Paul, international scale model.com. Thanks for watching. Take care, and I'll see you later.